Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don. Um, I want to do a slightly different video for you today. Um, I know I haven't been doing many videos lately, but uh, this one has been on my mind for a while. And it's regarding this. This is a Hobby King quad board. Um, quadcopter, that is. Now, this board actually has many, many uses, but we're just going to sort of go over the basics on how to set it up. So, all of the steps required to get your first quadcopter built up. Um, this is the board I would recommend for your first, especially. Um, there are a lot of other options for control boards, but um, the, the KK multi-board is really sort of the simplest and um, the cheapest by far, the easiest to set up, and uh, actually works really, really well for the price. So um, stay tuned, and uh, hopefully this will take you through all the steps that you need to get your quad running. Okay guys, so let's get started off with some basic quad build tips. These will make a big difference in how your craft flies in the end, but has nothing to do with the configuration itself of the board. Uh, let's see, the first thing would be reducing the vibration of the board itself. This is basically how the board is mounted on your quad. A lot of guys use nylon step-ups. Nylon step-ups work fantastic. Sometimes they're a little difficult to find here and there, um, but they do actually work really well. It makes for a nice clean mount and reduces a little bit of vibration on the way up to the board. Next is I would actually, I actually often use the foam rubber box that actually houses the um, the board when it's shipped from Hobby King. That foam rubber is fantastic because it's this nice little seated area that the quad board can sit. It reduces vibration. You can just put a little CA glue underneath and stick it right down. And uh, that, that thing works great and it's super protective. Um, that's another way of reducing vibration. Uh, next is use decent props. They will make a big difference um, and balance them. You have to balance. You really do. If you have props that are way off of balance, you'll end up sending so much vibration even through your mounts or through your board, and um, you'll end up with a, a craft that's very difficult to control. So pick up a balancer, balance your props. You're going to need two standards, two counter-rotating. Okay? All quads use two standards and two counter-rotating. Okay, so let's get into uh, how to set the board up itself. Okay, guys, so the next thing is board orientation. Uh, you'll notice on the Hobby King board that there are two arrows pointed forward. Just make sure that that is pointed towards your lead boom. Do keep in mind that I'm telling you guys how to set up a stock Hobby King board with the stock firmware, which is in plus configuration. So make sure those arrows are pointed towards your lead boom, your number one boom. I use a green prop up front, people stripe the boom, lights, whatever you want. Just make sure those arrows are pointed in the proper direction. Okay, so now let's set up motor configuration. Um, this is basically figuring out what's motors 1 through 4 and the rotating direction of each one. Okay, so uh, motor 1 is directly in front. Motor 2 is going to be your left-hand side. Motor 3 is going to be your right-hand side. And motor 4 is your rear motor. Okay, so 1 forward, 2 left, 3 right, 4 rear. That's very important, and this is for stock firmware again. So um, for your motors one and four, you're going to have clockwise rotation. Okay, clockwise rotation on one and four. Two and three need counterclockwise rotation. Um, again, this is very very important. So you need to remember that one and four are going to be using your reverse rotation props, and two and three are going to be rotating counterclockwise, which is a standard rotating prop. Okay. All right, next up. Okay, so now let's program the ESCs. Uh, the reason we program the ESCs to nickel metal or NICAD is to prevent uh, what's called LVC, which is low voltage cutoff. Low voltage cutoff works very well for lithium polymer batteries, but the problem is that I would prefer to destroy my battery because of overdraining the battery than to have a speed control go into LVC and slow a motor down which will almost certainly destroy your quad. So again, go into nickel metal or NICAD to prevent your ESCs from going into low voltage cutoff mode. Okay, so let's plug the speed control leads into the board itself. Um, polarity is definitely essential and uh, if you actually look at the way the board works on the receiver leads and the speed control leads no matter what you've got your negative wire towards the outside of the board the outer edge of the board is always going to line up with the negative or black wires so um, plugging your ESCs in you've got one through four just like I told you in the motor orientation it's one two three four forward left right rear 
Um, and uh, this the receiver leads are equally simple. It says right on the board printed you've got throttle, elevator, aileron, rudder, um, and on your receiver it should also say the same thing. So all you have to do is have those male to male leads and you run them straight in. Okay, so now we're going to calibrate all four ESCs. And in order to do so, we have to bypass the board. Uh, in order to bypass the board, you have to use a Phillips head screwdriver on the yaw pot, which is the far left pot there. Uh, we want to set that to zero, which could be full counterclockwise or it could be full clockwise. Each board tends to be a little bit different, so if it doesn't work one way, try the opposite. So in order to do this, you have to actually take your throttle, put it all the way to 100%, plug in your battery, you'll see five rapid blinks that almost looks like one solid, but it's very rapid. You'll hear two beeps from your ESCs if you're using the Turnigy plushes. Immediately throttle down. That tells your um, speed control that this is 100% and this is negative 100%, so you get better resolution. Okay guys, so um, what you're seeing me do here is to kind of throw the quad around and, and uh, moving in certain axes in order to determine whether the gyro has to be reversed or not. Um, this is not the safest way to do this. This isn't the way I recommend doing it. It's just the easiest to display. Best way to do it is to take the props completely off and confirm that the motor that is dipping towards the ground is actually speeding up rather than slowing down. Because if it is slowing down and it's moving towards the ground at the same time, then you know that that gyro has to be reversed, otherwise your quad is going to flip over on its main flight. Okay, so you want to do this before we determine what has to be reversed and what does not. Okay, so now uh, let's say we've determined that one axis has to be reversed. Um, in this video, I'll show you if it's the yaw axis, which often happens, actually. Um, what will end up happening is you'll go to test it. If you didn't quite get it when you were holding it, um, you go to test it. Everything seems fine except for it starts spinning out of control. Um, if that's true, your yaw has to be reversed. What you do is you take your roll pot and you turn it to zero, just like calibrating the ESCs. From there, you plug in your battery. You'll see a few uh, flashes. And then whichever stick you move on your transmitter, it will reverse that axis. Okay. So, for instance, in this video, you'll see me move the rudder. That's going to reverse my rudder or my yaw axis. If it was my elevator, it would be my pitch. If it was my um, aileron, it would be my roll. Just make sure you um, reverse the proper one and then set that pot back to 50% to start. Okay guys, you're on the home stretch here. All you have to do is activate your board, double check all of your settings, make sure nothing needs to be reversed in your transmitter, and you should be flying. Um, so in order to activate your board, you go throttle down, and then rudder left, sometimes rudder right, depending on how things are set up. Uh, so again, throttle down, and then rudder to one of the extremes, for far left or far right. And what you'll see is the light will go on, and then you should have full control of your motors. Now, uh, be very careful. Make sure you don't need to uh, reverse your throttle. If it's not activating, reverse your throttle. Uh, make sure you don't need to reverse your, um, your yaw axis or your rudder within your transmitter as well. And double check all of your settings before you actually go out and fly. And do this in baby steps. Just make sure when you're going for your first, first flights, just take it a couple inches off the ground because you're going to have to adjust the sensitivity of the gyros as well. Um, adjusting the sensitivity of the gyros is actually fairly easy. What you really want to do is start at about 50% on the potentiometers and then bring it up and up and up until you develop a shake and you'll actually see it'll, it'll be compensating for itself very rapidly. Uh, once you actually see a shake, back them down just slightly, just not even a quarter of a turn. It's a very small amount can make a big difference. So um, you'll have a lot of fun playing around with the gyros. Never try to fly it without gyros because it's this just doesn't work. You have to have the gyros active. So I hope this video helped out a few people. If you like it, thumbs it up and uh, help me out. Um, I think that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.